How's it going guys? My name is Dylan and let's do something different. In this video, I'm interviewing Megan from Haskin Creatives and she's going to share some of her experience from when she started her business eight months ago to growing it to the success that it is now. If you're thinking about beginning your own business, you'll definitely find some valuable information here. This is going to be a little bit of a longer video, so grab a cup of tea or coffee and enjoy what Megan has to share. Megan is the owner of Haskin Creatives, an online marketing company that uses Pinterest to drive traffic to businesses' websites. She left her teaching job eight months ago to begin her business and now has 11 clients that she services and has even recently hired another freelancer to help with the workload. She works from anywhere, she has internet connection and has been able to keep the business going while traveling through Vietnam, Laos, Thailand, Nepal, Los Angeles, Costa Rica and Panama, where you are currently based. Megan, welcome. Thank you. I'm really looking forward to chatting with you and I think you have quite a lot of interesting things to share with your business and how the experience has been going so far. So just take me back to the beginning like when you started Haskin Creatives and how, how did that go? How did that come up, come about in the first place? Well, I think for a long time, like many months, actually, I had been searching online for remote types of jobs. So I would often go into periods when I was teaching and then you would go away or there would be a situation where a cool opportunity came up but I wasn't able to just leave my teaching job and go do that. Like if I wanted to do a yoga teacher training workshop, I couldn't just take off like you don't get flexible holidays. You do get holidays in teaching, but not flexible ones where you can just decide whenever you want to take off. And <clears throat> I wanted to create a situation where I would be able to do that and yeah wouldn't be so drained from teaching because I wanted to be able to work from home and have that kind of sit situation like freedom um, and I actually came across Pinterest marketing by accident I had been blogging for my own teaching and travel journey and was looking into Pinterest marketing for my blog and while I was on the Pinterest platform then I saw like a pin about become a Pinterest VA and found out that people could actually do this as like a job and get clients and get paid to do it. So during that time when you were doing all the research about what kind of work you can do where were you living then and what was your like and like what was that situation like? Mm. So I think I originally started looking into freelancing and like digital nomad work and lifestyle became popular when I was still living in Costa Rica. So when my teaching contract ended in Costa Rica um, and Dylan was going to continue on his bicycle journey, I decided to go back to South Africa for some time because I could stay with my parents and kind of figure out what I was going to do while I was there. And that whole process of trying to find a job or find remote work was very overwhelming. And I kind of went back into teaching because it was far easier for me to find a teaching job. So I moved on to Vietnam. And then while I was in Vietnam, I came across the Pinterest marketing course and started that. Okay, so you had actually already kind of decided to do that when you left Costa Rica and then sort of like cancelled on that plan and went to Vietnam because you couldn't find anything any mm -hmm. kind of work things to do and then after Vietnam was when you began that so yeah. how was that how was that sort of um like taking that decision to do it after you had in a way not like failed it at the first time mm -hmm. but the first time you sort of got I don't, I don't want to put words in your mouth but you got a bit scared to do it the first time? And yeah, I just thought it was like, I mean, I wasn't actively like decided that I was going to pursue a digital nomad job. It was just something that I was looking into. And to be honest, a lot of those kinds of digital nomad jobs are like, you can be a translator or you can be, um, 
I don't know what all of them were, but they were all related to being a US citizen or to having prior experience like a website designer. Like I didn't know how to design websites, um, and, but I wasn't like committed to it. Um, but it was always like an option and I was, it was always in the back of my mind, like, how do so many people do this? Like, I don't understand how you can just like do it. <laughs> and I think that's what was so helpful about the course because it really like taught you how to find clients and that kind of thing. Cool. So it was after you found that course in Vietnam that it's sort of, this is what I want to go do in this like direction. Mm -hmm. And, um, just how was that experience for you as far as considering uh leaving your job which was a consistent consistently paying job where you're getting a salary to beginning something where it's kind of there's a lot of unknown like mm -hmm. talk tell me a little bit about that experience of how it felt to do that um so once I had decided and actually like took the leap where I was like actually doing it like I didn't feel scared it was almost it took me like months to actually purchase the course but once I had purchased the course then it was like okay I'm like in it but I knew that purchasing the course was like committing to it and that's why it took a long time for me to purchase the course like months to purchase right. that course um and that was really scary because I hadn't done the course yet so I hadn't heard I hadn't seen like how I could make it work so it was just very overwhelming and like I didn't I didn't know what was going to happen but once I had purchased the course I was still in my teaching job in Vietnam and I felt pretty secure because I knew like if things didn't work out I always had teaching to like fall back on right mm -hmm. how was it finding your first client because a lot of people when they're beginning their first if they're beginning their first business, it's like nobody necessarily wants to hire you if you don't have any experience. So how did you go about being able to get your first paid client when you had zero experience doing it, only the course? Mm -hmm. um, so I like to attribute a lot of that to the mindset work that I did. And I mean, I wasn't actively practicing like a mindset practice I just like naturally would do it like I had heard about like mindfulness and mindset work before and I was like applying those concepts to my life but now that I was starting a business I don't actually know what made me link the two but I just <laughs> committed to telling myself that this was going to work and that I was going to get a client and I would literally like wake up every day and like just recite to myself and even to you like I have a Pinterest monthly management client. I have one as if it had already yeah. happened. And then I, I mean, I also like put in work. I created a website that was branded in a certain way to attract the kinds of clients I wanted. And then I started working with a free client in the beginning just to experiment and to test out my skills and feel what it felt like to work with someone on pinterest okay um i had pinterest marketed my own blog so i like knew the processes i just didn't know the process of working with someone else's content so i worked with a free client while i was doing the course and then within a month a client like reached out to me without i mean she didn't know that i didn't have previous experience i just hadn't actively said i'm like new at this <laughs> okay um, but she reached out to me and she asked me, I mean, she had already said, I looked at your website, I really like your vibe and I want to work with you. Hmm. So that was a really good, I, I think I'm really grateful that it happened so quickly because that gave me a very big boost and I attribute that to mindset. And I mean, just because I believe in the mindset work now, I think it works for me. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's like, that's super cool. And like from my point of view, having been around your situation as you've been doing it, it's been it has been very interesting to see how your how the mindset like practices that you've put in mm -hmm. have sort of played a role in how things are going with your business. Yeah, and things I like actually that. wrote a blog post today about mindset because I often speak about it on my Instagram accounts and people really resonate with it and are like, 
what are you doing? Because every time you talk about your mindset, then like things actually happen. And I was just writing today about how my mindset is mindset practices are like a tap or a faucet. And like when I practice mindfulness and like really focus on it, it's like I turn on the tap to abundance and like money and clients contacting me. And then when I neglect it, it like turns off that tap. I mean, I still have my clients and stuff, but there's n- no movement towards up leveling unless yeah. I do the mindset work. It's right. so interesting. And can you share a bit about like, can you share a bit about those specific mindset practices that mm-hmm. you do? Like what kind of stuff do you do? Mm-hmm. So in the beginning when I was just starting out, like I was very new to it, but I knew about like journaling and writing affirmations and setting goals. Like I had always grown up and, and made like lists of things that I wanted to achieve and those things would often come true. But I didn't actively know that I was actually putting into place the law of attraction or anything. Um, so I would just do that and I would just change my beliefs around those the topics like if I believed like oh my goodness this is going to be super hard to do this business and to get clients I would just work on changing those beliefs by re- like repetition with my words like just saying like I'm a successful Pinterest manager and I have this many clients I earn this much and whenever I would notice that like limiting belief coming up or like a fear I would just like switch it over to reciting whatever affirmation or belief I wanted it to be yeah so that was kind of my process in the beginning which helped me get a few clients and like start my business on a good note or whatever but then in December of last year I took a mindset course it was actually just like a boot camp one week thing with manifestation babe and it was called the epically aligned boot camp and then she taught me a lot of like um exercises that really like helped me up level like it just like refined my practice in a sense so one of the things that I think is really cool and for people who are listening to implement I don't know how to say the word (laughs) (laughs) but it's like a Hawaiian traditional practice Uh, right yeah I don't know how to say it (laughs) do you know how to um spell it it's very long (laughs) okay well I'll just add the it starts with an H um yeah okay we'll add the word (laughs) but it's a forgiveness um ceremony that they did like traditionally in Hawaiian culture and yeah it's based on the principle that in order to create like space for the new or like things that you you want to attract into your life you need to clear out the old so that you would forgive like people that you still have like like holding a grudge yeah and for me it wasn't necessarily a person because I don't feel like I hold a lot of like judgment or grudges or whatever Mm -hmm. but there was like you can forgive past experiences or like let go of past experiences that might you might be holding on to like maybe about money or a past version of yourself like maybe you used to be a certain way or yeah that you want to let go of it sounds very like what do you say woo woo but I mean I really believe in it after practicing it and just going on that thing that you said about the money because that's been specifically a big thing for me Mm -hmm. having uh I suppose what you would call a bad money mindset (laughs) and it's when um I mean at least from like my perspective as it I suppose when you're talking about it in this way it's when I basically have like limiting beliefs of what I think I can afford with money or Mm -hmm. how much I think I could earn or Mm -hmm. even just the idea that I have of what money is yes um is I have or I had a limiting belief on that do you want to like share a little bit about that specifically Mm -hmm. about um like a money mindset yeah so I think I was so I didn't have it as strongly as maybe you had it like we took a lot longer to work through your limiting beliefs around around money but basically what a limiting belief is is basically maybe when you were a child or through your experiences with money you've developed these beliefs like maybe you believe that Well, this is one of my beliefs that I had that like you couldn't be like a spiritual conscious good person (laughs) and have a lot of money. So like to me, I believe that money was bad in a sense. 
um, that rich people were greedy and that prevented me from being not rich but having a lot of money because I blocked myself from that like I would not even knowingly walk away from situations where there was like a lot of money involved um so to fix that you just need to change your limiting beliefs around that and realize what money actually is and to me how I like to see it is that money is just kind of energy and the more you have of it doesn't make you greedy it just means you can have more fun right and it's not like by having more money you're like taking away from other people because there's an unlimited amount like it's just a number yes like in the bank you don't actually have that amount of money sitting in your bank you Mm -hmm. just have that number on your screen yeah so uh, like how would you like okay so somebody is now considering oh i should look at what my limiting beliefs Mm -hmm. are how would you suggest that they go around becoming aware of what those are because i think the first like step of it is is to realize oh i have a limiting belief Mm -hmm. but i think sometimes some people they might not even realize that that is a limiting belief that they have they might just think oh that's just my it's just how I've always been or it's my um, Mm. my personality like I'm just like this but actually that is a limiting belief but how so how would you like suggest that people begin if they're interested to sort of become aware of what they are Mm -hmm. so I think a good place to start is to kind of look at your current money situation and to see if that's like a situation that you're actually happy with or if it isn't like if if you're in debt or if you um, never have enough money or you come to the weekend and you can't purchase certain things, that there are limiting beliefs around in, in you that right. are creating that reality. So like whatever you're believing is creating your current reality. So if you look at debt, you're going to start thinking about how you feel about debt and how what are your views on money? What experiences did you have as a child? Because that's where our limiting beliefs start. Right. And that's what I'm kind of sort of asking about also is say things that are, aren't just about money, what other limiting beliefs mm-hmm. people might have, like that they think is just their personality. Mm-hmm. Like say, say I am somebody who like like who gets annoyed very quickly. Mm -hmm. Uh, There might be people who will say, well, I just have a short fuse and that's just what I have. But even that is a limiting belief itself. Mm -hmm. So as far as like identifying like those things that we, because it's hard to think of something that is a limiting belief if it is a belief for us. Do you know what I mean? I know, I understand. I think that's like, it takes, it definitely takes time. Like I didn't just like realize my limiting beliefs straight away that like you learn to watch your thoughts and hear what you're telling yourself over and over again. Like when you're presented with a difficult situation, it's important to sort of think about what you're thinking during those situations. Like, what are you telling yourself? Like when you go look in the mirror, what do you actually tell yourself? Or like, what do you say? Okay, so, to yourself. Al- so almost like to think out loud what you're saying and then try and pick up or any of these things. Triggers. Are they like negative? Mm-hmm. And that's sort of a way of identifying. A limiting uh, belief. Yeah, like. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we don't even like say it actively to ourselves. Sometimes it's just something that we <laughs> believe. Right. That's true. It is tricky. Yeah. I mean, for you, it was helpful for me to to point it out for you almost sometimes yeah. like Dylan had a really tough time with um buying things for himself <laughs> <laughs> yeah so he would have no problem if I was like oh Dylan I really want like a MacBook and you would be like oh you should get it like right you, like, you need deserve it, it and, and whatever but then when it came to him needing a new MacBook <laughs> that would be a whole emotional like roller coaster about him needing to right. purchase it like guilt yes and, that's right and it was almost like I'm when we spoke about that as it was happening for example when we bought the macbook for Mm -hmm. example um that it was because i almost had too much of an of an attachment of what the macbook was Mm -hmm. and that's why it became such a big deal because i had like sort of elevated oh a macbook is so 
special and Mm -hmm. but it's just it's a tool that i need for work and once i also change like that mindset is it doesn't it doesn't matter if i needed another tool Mm -hmm. it's just what i needed for work it wasn't um i didn't have to make such a big deal out of the item which is like a material thing right and even the money like we get attached to buying something or to losing the money when in reality we're not losing anything we're Mm -hmm. gaining something from spending that money and that's the kind that's a good um tip for attracting more money into your life is to feel gratitude for when you're letting money go and feel like excited equally excited as when you would be getting a whole bunch of money because you are getting an item in return right yeah because people often they focus on i've lost this money but they haven't they just bought something with mm-hmm. it. okay cool we just took a little break <laughs> <laughs> to restart the camera um okay so speaking of things like mindset and things like that do you have any kind of um like a routine or something like that or Mm -hmm. that you do to keep this practice up yeah so there are i mean you can like look it up online and i think different ways of doing it resonate with different kinds of people so like what do you do Mm -hmm. so for me i love to write so that's always been a thing that i've enjoyed so a big part of my mindset practice is journaling and it's gotten to a point now where i don't actually like have a set thing of what i journal about because it's just like what do i feel like (laughs) journaling about today but things that i journal about is kind of like writing what my life what i want my life to look like almost like a story so i think about like what kind of place do I live in? Um, how do I feel when I wake up? What kinds of activities do I do during the day? And that's kind of like a visualization exercise as well. And that attracts um, that reality into my life or just makes me aware of what I actually want. Um, I think sometimes we just like move through life blindly, just saying, oh, I want to live in this place. But then you don't actually like figure out how to do mm. that or what that would actually look like so that's like a big practice for me is the journaling and before the journaling or before any kind of like affirmation saying or um anything like that I think it's important to get into a state of flow Mm -hmm. (laughs) and we've talked about this a lot and flow is kind of you just like raise your energy so that you are at a good like I mean, these terms are very (laughs) woo-woo, but like a vibrational energy to attract what you want. Um, So that's like you can do through meditation or yoga or anything that makes you feel good. Right. And the last thing is to, on a day-to-day basis, to step into that vision of yourself. And that was like the biggest game changer for me. That made me go from like three to 11 clients. Right. (laughs) And sorry... Like, what does that mean t- to step into that version of yourself? Yeah, so basically, if you have a goal, and for me, it's just easy to relate this to money because this is kind of what I focused on in the beginning. Not necessarily money, but growing my business. So if I was a person who earned 10K months or had 11 clients or however many clients how would that person act and then really embody that version so for example um i knew that like a 10k vision of myself wouldn't be doing everything in the business right like a successful entrepreneur doesn't do all the tasks yeah (laughs) and i feel like when i made that choice and like actually took action on it by hiring out in my business like client increase just like rolled in Hmm. without me even like people ask me like what do I do to get clients and it's so funny because like good question I don't do anything (laughs) I mean I do do things in terms of like I blog every week but that doesn't like that's not directly like getting a client um Because like, I don't like, I do cold pitch um, some people and I've gotten a few clients that way. But most of the time I just get like a form submission on my website saying, hey, I want a Pinterest manager and I want to work with you. Right. It's not like this huge hassle or like, I don't know. Yeah. Then I think what a lot of people, I mean, there's, there is like something to say about somebody contacting you. But it's a whole nother story where you convert them to a client because you could get all kinds of people Mm -hmm. saying, hey, this is this. 
uh, how has your experience been or like, what do you do or what advice could you give someone to convert, say, somebody who is a, um, a lead a lead and how would you convert them into a client mm -hmm. if obviously you want them to be your client because yeah so the first tip of, tip of advice that i would give is first like people are asking me how do you get those inquiries in the first place right so you first want to try and get them to contact you right and it works better if they're contacting you than if you're contacting them okay um and to do that i i like to put into practice that i'm offering like lots of free advice that positions me as an expert so people want to work with someone who knows what they're talking about like right. so by me blogging every week and providing free information this makes it that people see me as like a pinterest expert and they want to work with me because they can tell i know stuff about pinterest yeah so once i've got the lead then to convert them to a customer and I'm not going to say that I don't get those leads that like don't ever call right. me back. But um, most of the time I like to get on a call with them. And the reason I like to get on a call with them is so that we're making a personal connection because I feel like that's what sells Okay. my... Because people are hiring you and not in a sense the person they're not they are hiring the action of what you're doing for pinterest mm -hmm. but because this is like a long-term relation sort of thing mm -hmm. uh it's very important how you connect with the people right yes so i feel like that is almost like the strength of my business is i mean there's lots of pinterest managers out there that can do exactly what i do but they they don't have the same kind of relationship that i do yeah. with my clients do you feel you any of your experience from being a teacher has come back mm -hmm. to help you in your business now mm -hmm. so i think it's just like a communication kind of thing that has helped me i mean i've always had to deal not always but like a lot of the time you're dealing with difficult parents or you're telling parents like news about their child that's not like easy to hear and you need to tell them in a way that's like positive or that's helpful to them and kind and caring in a kind and caring manner. I mean, as a teacher, that's like who you are. Right. You're a kind and caring person that looks after children. Yeah. So I kind of like embody that same persona <laughs> uh -huh. of myself when I'm with my Pinterest management clients. Okay. And there are definitely people that don't resonate with that style. And I mean, that's okay. They should like find another Pinterest manager that suits their business and their like work style. Yeah. And how about anything else from being a teacher? I mean, just from my perspective, you're a very um, organized. I mean, that might not necessarily be from being a teacher, but mm -hmm. you kind of have to be organized as a teacher. Yeah. And those kind of things have played a role mm -hmm. in your business now. I think the biggest role was that I was used to working like really long hours. Yeah. And like persisting through and all of that like contributed to this business and being organized and doing admin work and communicating all of those things have helped <laughs> yeah. and given a good perspective for this business. Yeah. You mentioned earlier about hiring somebody else and things mm -hmm. like that. How how was that process for you as far as like letting go of certain roles of your business? So I think a lot of people who own their own business, when they begin, it's only them. Mm -hmm. And then of, as it starts to expand, if you want to expand your business, you either need to work a lot more hours or you need to start getting help in. But like, I think there's a bit of a challenge in letting go some of those tasks that you say you were so comfortable doing or in a specific way. Mm -hmm. like how has that process been hiring somebody and having that experience of like letting go of some of the things that you do or, mm. um, yeah. Yeah. So I wouldn't say it was like as hard as I expected it would be because I am, I'm not controlling. I just like things a particular way. <laughs> right. But, but then that must have been a bit of a challenge. Yes. And 
just recognizing that those things were within me and not within the other person. Okay. Um, so that was like a good opportunity for learning about myself. It was myself. another like a limiting <laughs> belief or something. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, it's it's gone very well. I just needed to provide like a lot of training to have things the way that I wanted to. Going back on the client question, mm -hmm. you spoke a little bit about how you got clients and how do you, do you have any tips about keeping the clients longer? Because yes, you can have a client that they're just there for, the, for like a month and they could leave. Mm -hmm. So how do you keep your relationship going with clients? Um, so... <laughs> I don't know if I want to give these secrets away. <laughs> so I think it's really important in the beginning to provide a lot of communication. Um, and in my mind, it's like I'm making the client comfortable with me and how I'm working and letting them know that I'm working <laughs> and what I'm doing so that they um feel safe in a sense or comfortable with me mm -hmm. and then afterwards I let go of that kind of I don't email them like every week even. okay so in the beginning I'm like almost emailing every day updating what's going on to develop that like trust and okay. the comfort with what I'm doing and I have like a very like open relationship in a sense so like when I first design my pins I don't just like send them the pins and and ask them if it's okay like I go that extra step where I'm like please and I even say it in this way like please let me know if you don't like something because I would much rather you tell me now than than try to be nice and then like three months down the t line you're like I don't really like those pins and like mm. I want them changed like I don't mind if they want to tell me um that's something they don't like something or they don't like the way that I'm working or right. I'm just always like asking for feedback and questions and just treating it like nurturing that relationship in the beginning no that's cool I think there is you're like learning the learning curve in beginning your own business is is so huge if you look at like when you first began Pinterest and what you thought back then mm -hmm. to now. Mm -hmm. um, can you share a little bit about about a little bit about that experience of going through a, a learning process and not knowing how to do things and then figuring it mm -hmm. out? So in the beginning, I, I don't think like, and this was the same with teaching when I started teaching, like when I became a teacher, I thought I would be like playing and singing and painting the whole day. And then I got there <laughs> and I was like, oh my goodness, this is not like playing and singing all day. Um, and the same goes with this. It's like, yes, you're going to be a Pinterest manager, but like actually there's this whole other side of a business that you also need to know about like branding and website design and you can hire out for those things. But when you're just starting a business, it's easier to just do those things yourself. Um, so learning all those things. I mean, I really liked learning about all those things. And okay. I like learning taking courses about like manifestation and like all those things um but definitely one of the biggest things was like I really limited myself and that was one of my limiting beliefs like this is a lot of money and that's where it like caps and okay. I, I felt like I had always like capped myself okay with the the potential that I had so like my goal when I started my Pinterest business was that I wanted I think seven clients okay. and then my business would be sorted and I just needed to maintain seven clients and I think what made me realize was I got on a call with another Pinterest manager and we had a cool like coffee date and stuff and she was working with 20 clients and I was wow. just like what why am I capping myself at like seven yeah like I I can get there like easily yeah and then things started changing about like wow I can really like grow this thing <laughs> and like was it from there that you started to look at things like employing somebody else and... mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because seven was what I could manage alone and have the lifestyle that I kind of wanted in terms right. of like being able to like have the afternoon off and stuff but when you start taking on more clients obviously that gets limited yeah um, but hiring out then opens it up again so <laughs> that was cool if you could if you could go back and like whisper something to yourself 
when you first started mm -hmm. what would you tell yourself now i think i would tell myself because this is something that i've learned along the way that like it's okay to don't be worried about investing in yourself or your business because it will only magnify it okay and by investing in yourself what do you mean by that i mean like even to purchase the Pinterest management course was like such a big step for me. And like looking, mm. I mean, now it might be a lot to some people, but to me, it's not like a lot at all anymore, but it was like $300 then. And that was like a lot of money for me Yeah. back then. Right. But just like, I mean, $300 to start your business, is that a lot of money? No. Right. <laughs> and I've like made that return like within the first month with my first client. Yes. Um. So just recognizing that like hiring out for like a website or hiring out for a branding expert or a coach isn't, is actually like helping your business. Mm -hmm. And it's not just, I don't know, yeah, something to be feared. <laughs> <laughs> and then as far as like your plans for the future, I know that's very broad and it's very big, but do you have any kind of specific plans with Haskin Creatives? at the moment or are you sort of seeing how it's going or how are you seeing it yeah at the moment i'm pretty happy with where i am and i do think like i want it to grow like i have a vision of like a 10k business which is exciting um but with that like kind of growth there obviously comes like growing pains and it's like i i know like part of like if you are currently in like a difficult like uncomfortable situation that's only because like growth is happening and on the other side of that is like the up leveling but i think i did like quite a lot of up leveling within the last few months and i'm just kind of like letting it like settle before i do the next up level but I'm looking at um, more Pinterest training and kind of seeing how that develops. And Cool. <laughs> and then the last couple of questions is basically like, if there's someone that's out there listening that is in their job and they're not so happy with it necessarily, um, but what message would you want to give them about, about whatever? <laughs> Like what message would you want to give someone who is maybe in a job that they don't like at the moment? And mm. I don't know, because I think like doing something that you don't like can sometimes be helpful <laughs> for personal growth. Like, I don't think it's necessarily about that, that right. you're trying to like escape your current situation, because from experience, if you're just trying to escape your current situation and just like go into it blindly, it's that you're going to experience those same uncomfortable situations or things you don't like in any other situation. Right. So I think the first thing is to go into it, not from a place of reaction, but from a place of aligned action. And when we talk about aligned action, it's like moving towards something in a space of like knowing that this is not from reaction and that's actually like beneficial okay to yourself um but i would say do it <laughs> right and even if it is out of reaction you're still going to learn something yeah and what's like the worst thing that could happen right. <laughs> <laughs> i would definitely say like do the mindset work though before you're like i would say that would be your most important thing like your mindset work okay for starting a business okay so kind of like get your mindset on out. track mm -hmm. even like while you have your job and and then consider from there yeah another thing that i just want to mention because like i also had this experience is like when we say we're going to work on our mindset so now you go ahead and you work on it but then you're like there's no results like after a week right. i have no results i have no results so another like the trick is that you have to like believe it so much that it's like you need to like train yourself to like really believe that's going to happen so much that you don't question it like you don't care if it's been like six months and you haven't like okay gotten a delivery <laughs> right. on what yeah. you've been trying to manifest because it's definitely coming hmm. cool and then lastly where can people find you in panama <laughs> <laughs> um i think the best place is just like on my website which is haskingcreatives.com 
haskincreatives.com. Mm-hmm. Cool. Thank you very much, Megan. You're welcome. I really appreciate you sharing this and hopefully it will be helpful to somebody. Um, you've done really well. And, you know, from like my point of view, going from um, when you began with, with like zero clients to eight months later with 11 and how you handling your business has been really inspiring, even for my own stuff. So good job. Well done. And if anyone has like any questions about mindsets or starting their business, especially if you're in South Africa, because <laughs> that was like such a huge thing. Like I, did, I couldn't wrap, wrap my head around how like me as a South African, how anyone would hire me. Okay. That was a limiting belief I had to like work through. Right. So if you're in South Africa and you want to get going, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Thanks very much. Much appreciated. Well done cool thanks for watching guys i hope you got some valuable information out of that interview and let me know if you'd like me to do more of these kind of interviews thanks for watching and i'll check you next time